seven trumpets during the first half of the tribulation, we saw those, they only poured out on one third of the earth. Now, these bowls of wrath are poured out on the entire earth and especially the kingdom of the Antichrist or those that have taken the mark of the beast, they especially affect them. This is the final cleansing of the earth and the beast system off the earth. So Revelation 16, starting in one, and then I heard a loud voice from the temple telling the seven angels, go and pour out on the earth the seven bowls of the wrath of God. So the first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth and harmful and painful sores came upon the people who bore the mark of the beast and worshiped its image. So here we see that there's a direct relationship between people that take the mark and an adverse side effect here with the boil, the bowls, the boils. Um, and we also see that this is like what happened with the sixth plague in Egypt. Um, the Egyptians came down with boils, but it did not harm those that belong to God. Israel during this time was not harmed. And I think there's a, this is going to happen again during the tribulation. Israel will not be harmed from many of these. They'll be protected. Um, but the kingdom of the beast will be. And so I think this is on purpose too, to show the remnant of Israel, especially during that last 42 months. Remember, they're going to be protected by God, taken into the mountains, perhaps Petra, and they'll be supernaturally protected by him. So Revelation 16, 3, the second angel poured out his bowl on the sea and it became like blood of a corpse and every living thing died that was in the sea. And then the third angel poured out his bowl in the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel in charge of the water say, just are you, O holy one, who is and who was, for, for you brought these judgments, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink. It is what they deserve. And I heard the altar saying, yes, Lord God, the almighty, true and just are your judgments. And so here in um, Exodus 7, the water was turned to blood as the very first plague um, in Egypt. And so here we see the waters being turned to blood in the oceans as well as in the streams and rivers. Now in, in Ezekiel 47, we see that God, after the tribulation, cleanses everything. And we'll talk about this um, in a couple weeks too, God willing, cleanses everything from the water that comes from underneath the tabernacle, uh, comes from underneath the temple of God in Jerusalem when, when Jesus returns. And so that will go clean everything that the water can get to. And so we see how God actually heals the land from this. So this is going to span all the way through to the end of the tribulation period, these waters being poisoned. And we also see that because the saints that come out um, are thirsty because they didn't have water to drink. The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun and it allowed the scorch, it allowed um, it to scorch the people with fire. And they were scorched by the force of heat and they cursed the name of God who had power over these plagues. They did not repent and give glory to him. Revelation 16, eight through nine. And so people are, are cursing God. They know by this time that it is God who is doing these things and they are cursing him instead of repenting. So these plagues of scorching, the scorching heat of the water turning to blood, not being able to drink it. These are all, these are all referred to in Revelation seven, when God promises them, they're no longer going to suffer these things. So we see that multitude that was already in there in seven was multitude that was spanning the tribulation period. So the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast and its kingdom was plunged into darkness. People gnawed their tongues in anguish and cursed the God of heaven for their pain and sores. So they're still hurting. They're still hurting from the boils and they did not repent of their deeds. Darkness was also the ninth plague in Egypt in Exodus 10. So the Israelites had light then 
And I believe they're also going to have light during this time as well. It said it's the kingdom. It is the Antichrist kingdom that's plunged into darkness. So it may be that those who belong to Jesus will have light. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings of the east. And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon, the mouth of the beast, and the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits like frogs, for they are demonic spirits performing signs, and they go abroad to the kings of the whole world and assemble them for battle on the great day of God Almighty. So frogs also were the second plague in Egypt. And, you know, there's of course more here to this because these are spirits that are like frogs. But it is interesting that um, the second plague in, in Exodus 8 was also frogs. And so here these demons, they go out and they perform signs and wonders to entice the kings of the entire world to assemble for the battle of Armageddon to where they think they actually think they can defeat Jesus when he comes. They actually think they can do this. And so these spirits entice them and they all come together to the battle of Armageddon. So it, um, and I thought this was interesting too. If you look at the um, Euphrates here, as it's drying up, it looks like, the omega symbol, which is, you know, just, just a symbol, just to remind you, God is the alpha and the omega, you know, he's, he is the great, he, you know, it's all, it's all him. The enemy doesn't, doesn't have a chance. So it's important here to note that repeatedly in revelation and from Jesus's own words about these end times, there is this warning about deception and lying signs and wonders. All throughout scripture, we see the magicians, we see those that are demon possessed, that can tell the future, that can prophesy and do things like that. We see this picture of the enemy can counterfeit. That's what Satan does. He's a counterfeiter. And so do not trust signs and wonders. Do not trust man. You have to know the Bible. And if anything does not line up with the Bible, throw it out. Because what the enemy does is he takes some truth, but then he sprinkles cyanide in it. And the whole thing is poison. So know your Bible. Get away from all these false prophets, all these false teachers, it, basically, anyone that's really popular on TBN or 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 any like of the really world worldly and famous people, um, yeah, look at them with some side eyes because that's usually not going to be truth. It's usually not going to be truth. You have to really know your Bible right now because deception is so high. Be very, very wary, wary of signs and wonders and prophets because by and large, they're false. And so a lot of people are going to get mad at me for saying that, but I'm not, I'm not here to please people. I'm here to warn because there's a lot of deception out there right now. We got to be as wise as serpents, but as innocent as doves. So Revelation 16 15 and 16, behold, this is Jesus speaking, behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake, keeping his garments on that he may go about naked and be seen exposed. And they assembled them in one place in the Hebrew that is called Armageddon. And so here they're coming together. They're assembling in Armageddon for the final battle. They're Euphrates was dried up, making way for the kings from the east. All nations are now assembled at Armageddon to go to war against Israel and Jesus at his return. So then the seventh angel pours out his bowl in the air and a loud voice came out of the temple and from the throne saying, it is done. And there were flashes of lightning and rumbles and perils of thunder and a great earthquake 
such as there has never been since man was on the earth. So great was that earthquake. The great city was split into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And God remembered Babylon the great to make her to make her drain the cup of wine of the fury of his wrath. And every island fled away, and no mountains were to be found, and great hailstones, about 100 pounds each, fell from heaven on the people. And they crushed God, and they cursed God for the plague of the hell, because the plague was so severe. Revelation 16, 17 through 21. So here we see this final plague, and people were just cursing God. They know. And everything right here, this is the turning up of the kingdom of the Antichrist. All the cities of the earth are just then rearranged. This, this earthquake tears down all the cities and the kingdoms of the Antichrist has fallen. So these bowls are unfolding over a span of three and a half years. And this is the final judgment, a literal tearing down of man's kingdom and lifting up of God's capital, Jerusalem. This will be the center of his kingdom on earth. And we'll read other in other places where Jerusalem is physically, the cities of the, of the earth are physically torn down and Jerusalem is physically raised up as the capital where all worship will come toward. So Babylon's fall, we will look at mystery Babylon, God willing next week, but I believe we'll make a compelling case that Babylon's fall is more um, is before this final scene, the, the city, Babylon, at least. Babylon is more than one geographical location. This is a mystery world government and religion that has seeped into every corner of the world that we know. Every government on the planet belongs to Babylon, people. <laughs> it does. The main seat of mystery Babylon will be destroyed earlier in the tribulation, I believe. And we're going to look at that next week. But we see there will be no place for this mystery to hide like she has done since Babel. She's hidden the shadows. Every particle of this world power controlled by Satan will be destroyed. And I, you know, this is, I think this is such a beautiful way to see it because this is the world governments from Nebuchadnezzar's government all the way through to today. And Jesus at his coming, not only crushes this current government, but he disintegrates every particle of this government system that has been here all along. He completely annihilates it and it no longer has any, any place. So these final plagues or bowls of wrath will remind Israel of how God protected her thousands of years ago. You know, there's a reason why they're, they're so similar to the plagues of Egypt. And so they're going to remind her and God's going to protect her like he did then. So he first brought her out with an outstretched arm then, and he's going to do it again. And she will receive all the promises during his millennial reign. All those promises, uh, her full land, her full job being, um, you know, caring for his temple and, and being that nation of priests for him, all the promises that he promised her, she will fully realize during the millennial reign. And we'll get to witness it. We'll get to participate in that. We'll get to be there for every bit of it. So we have so much to look forward to. The craziness of this day as we see it just warp speeding toward the tribulation. Um, hold on tight and stay in your Bible. I mean, I recommend just really limiting um, everything else and just let the Bible play. Just get it in your subconscious. Just get it there because uh, we're being bombarded lately with a lot of deception. So get in your Bible, read your Bible, Genesis to Revelation, read it in its full context. If you're just, I know I say this like a broken record, but if you're just reading the Bible for what you're going to get it for you, you're missing it. 
You have to read the Bible for what he is telling you about his story and what he is doing. So that's why it's important to read it Genesis to Revelation. And I think it's beautiful to read it chronologically. So you have a picture of the full story. But um, I encourage you guys to do that. Read it as much as you possibly can until he comes and gets us. That's my plan. So um, God bless you. I love you guys. And we have so much to look forward to. God willing, we'll look at Babylon next week.